In this Blender tutorial, I will show you how to create a planet atmosphere that you can add to your planets. And this method of creating the atmosphere will work great in both Cycles and Eevee, so I'm going to start out with doing it in Cycles, and then I will switch over to Eevee at the end and show you a few different settings that you should change to make it look better in Eevee. And what's so cool about this planet atmosphere is that it will actually adapt to the lighting. So I have a sunlight in the 3D scene and I can move the sunlight around and that's actually going to change where the atmosphere is. Because on the dark side of the planet where the sun isn't shining, it would be fully black and so you wouldn't be able to see the atmosphere. And for demonstration in this tutorial, I'm going to be using this procedural ice planet which I created. And I have a tutorial on how to create this procedural ice planet. A link will be in the description if you'd like to check that out. So in the procedural ice planet tutorial, I created the atmosphere within the same object because I wanted it to be completely procedural and just have it made out of one object. But in this video, we are going to be creating a separate object, and that separate object will be the atmosphere. And this way you can switch out the planet material, so you could use some image textures of the Earth, or you could use different planet materials that you've created. So the atmosphere will be a separate object and a separate material. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel and purchase the tutorial files, then you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the links in the description. And checking out my Gumroad and Patreon and the YouTube membership, are all great ways to help support this channel so I can continue to create Blender tutorials and content. So how I created the planet is I pressed Shift C and that makes sure that the 3D cursor is in the very center of the scene. Then I pressed Shift A and I went here to Mesh and I added an Icosphere and then without clicking away or moving the Icosphere you can click on the Add Icosphere settings right behind me and then right here on the subdivisions I just turned this up to a 6 and then I shaded the object smooth with the object context menu. And so this way we have a very nice round smooth sphere that we can use for our planet. And then I also added my procedural ice planet material onto this object but you can really use any planet whether you've created like a Mars planet or an Earth-like planet or some other procedural planet. Now because the atmosphere is going to be a separate object I want to duplicate the planet and then just scale it up a little bit so that it is a little bit bigger and it's just above the surface of the planet. So just select the object and I'm going to press shift D. Shift D will duplicate but then right after I duplicate this I'm going to hit S to scale and then you can hold down the shift key if you want to make your movements more sensitive and I'm just going to scale it up a little bit and then place it there. So now this sphere is a little bit bigger than the other one. If I hold down the Z button and go into the wireframe I can zoom in here to the side and you can see we have the planet and then the atmosphere. And if it is too big you can scale it down or scale it up later. I'm just going to leave it how it is for now. Now if I want to move the planet I would just select the planet or select the atmosphere because it is bigger so it is above the planet and then I would press G to grab and move it around. But you can see the planet it isn't moving with the atmosphere. So I'm going to zoom in here, hold down the Z button and go to wireframe and I want to select the planet first and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the atmosphere. I now want to parent the planet to the atmosphere. So with the atmosphere selected last, I'm going to press Control P and then I can click on object keep transform. So if I select the atmosphere I can press G to grab and I can move it around and the planet's going to move with it. Now if I hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view it's fully black and that's because I haven't added any lights and I've also deleted the world background. So let's add a sunlight now to look like the sun in the solar system of this planet. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go right down here to light and I'm going to add a sunlight. And then I'm going to press R to rotate and G to grab and just kind of move the sunlight up here. And then I can click right over here to go to the object data properties to edit the sunlight settings. So to make this look a little bit more like sunlight, I'm going to take the color here and I'm going to make it very, very slightly yellow, but still pretty white. And then also on the strength here, I'm going to turn this up to like a five so it is even brighter. Now if I move the sunlight around, I want the sunlight to always be pointed at the planet. And also when I move the planet around I want the sunlight to be pointed at it. So just select the sun and we are going to click right here to go to the object constraint properties. I'm just going to click on add object constraint and then I'm going to go right down here and click on track 2. Now on the target here I can click on the eyedropper and then I'm going to select the planet here. And now the sunlight will always be pointed at the planet. So if I press G to grab move the sunlight around you can see it's always pointed at the planet and if I select the planet or select the atmosphere and move it around you can see it is always following the planet. 
And also you can see the atmosphere actually has the planet material on it. So I'm going to click right here to go to the material properties. And I'm just going to click on the X button here to get rid of that material. But if I press the H key to hide the atmosphere, you can see the planet is still underneath it. So I can just press Alt H now to unhide that. So when I move the sunlight around, I want the atmosphere to adapt with the sun. And so to do this, we are going to be creating a gradient texture in the material. And then we're going to make it so the gradient is always pointed towards the sun. Now to do this, we need some object, which is always going to be pointed at the sun. And then we're going to use that object's rotation to rotate the gradient in the material. So I'm going to press Shift C again. That'll make sure the 3D cursor is in the center there. And I can now press Shift A. And I'm going to add an empty plane axis. And then I will press S to scale and scale this up a little bit. Now when we set up the material, the empty here is going to determine the rotation of the gradient. And so I want this empty object to always be rotated towards the sun. So just make sure you have the empty object selected. We're going to click right over here to go to the object constraint properties. And let's click on add object constraint and I can add the track two. And then on the target here, I can click on the eyedropper and we want to select the sun. So now if I select the sun and press G to grab, you can see that the empty is always moving around and it's always going to be facing up at the sunlight. Now if I select the atmosphere and move it around, you can see the empty isn't moving with the planet. So I just need to select the empty, hold down the shift key, and then select the atmosphere last. And then I'm going to press control P. I'm going to click on object keep transform. And that way if I select the atmosphere and move it around, the empty is moving along with it. All right, so we can now set up the material. So I'm going to select the atmosphere object, and then I'm going to go right over here to the shading tab. And in the shading workspace, I have the 3D space right here, and then the shader nodes right here. And I can hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view. And make sure that you have the atmosphere selected, and I'm going to click on new here to make a new material, and let's just rename the material. Now before I create the procedural material, I am going to be using the node wrangler add-on to preview different nodes. So if you don't have the node Wrangler enabled, you can click on edit and then you can go to the preferences and then over there on the add-ons tab you can just search for node wrangler and check mark the node wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So let's start by creating that gradient. So I'm going to press shift A, let's go here to the search and I'm going to search for the texture coordinate node and let's drop this here. And then if I control shift and select different nodes, that's going to preview different nodes and that's using the feature of the node wrangler. So when you control shift and select different nodes, the wire is going to go into the material output and so you can preview the different nodes. Now I'm going to control shift and click down the texture coordinate and we want to go to the object coordinates. So the object coordinates is going to have an X, a Y, and a Z value. But I only want to use one of these values. I want to use the Z value. So we are going to separate the X, Y, and Z values and just use one of them. And then we can use that to make the gradient. So I'm going to press shift A. Let's go here to the search. And I'm going to start to search for separate and we want to separate the x y and z values so i'm going to stick the separate x y z right here so now if i control shift and select the separate x y z we have three gradients and they're going to be going along the x axis the y axis and the z axis and i want to use the z axis because it's going up and down now i want to make this gradient more sharp because it's actually not very sharp here on the edge so i'm going to press shift a let's go here to the search and i'm going to search for for a color ramp and we're going to stick the color ramp right here after the separate XYZ. And then to make this sharper, I'm going to click on the white tab right here and I'm going to drag it much closer so it is more sharp. And now you can see the blending there between white and black is much smaller. And then also this principal shader, we don't actually need this, so I can select it and press X to delete it. Now if I select the sunlight and move it around, it's not actually moving the gradient around. And this is because we are just using this object's texture coordinate. But instead, on this texture coordinate, I want to click on this object right here, and then I want to select the empty. Or you can click on the eyedropper right here, and then move it over to the empty, and select the empty. And now you can see that the gradient has actually changed its position, because instead of using the default object's texture coordinate, we are using the rotation of the empty to determine the rotation of the X, Y, and Z. And if I select the sunlight and press G to grab, the sunlight moving is also going to rotate the empty, and so that's going to rotate 
rotate the gradient. So I can just click back on the atmosphere. Now I don't just want the atmosphere to evenly be all over the object. I want to mostly be able to see the atmosphere on the edges, but then kind of in the center, I want it to be much more subtle and less visible. So to do this, I'm going to press Shift A. Let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the layer weight node. And we're going to stick the layer weight node down here. And then I'm going to Control Shift and select it twice to preview the facing. Now the blend value is going to determine how dark it is, so I'm going to turn the blend value to just like a 0.1. So we are going to use this to make the atmosphere more visible on the edges. So where it is lighter, you're going to be able to see the atmosphere more, but then where it is darker, you'll see less of the atmosphere. Now with this layer weight node, it's all over the object, and I just want it to be where the sun is pointing. So we are going to mix it with this color ramp and make it so you can only see the layer weight on the side of the planet that the sun is shining on. So we're going to select the layer weight, hold down the shift key, and then select the color ramp. I can now press Control 0 and that is using another feature of the Node Wrangler, and it's going to add this Mix RGB, and I can click on the arrow to open it up. And then I can Control Shift and select the Mix RGB to preview it. Now I just want to add the dark values. So if I click on the Mix here, I can change this to Darken. And then I actually want this color ramp here to be going into the factor. So the factor is going to determine where it's going to be color 1 and where it's going to be color 2. And then I want the layer weight node to actually be going into color 1. And then this way, color 2 can just be fully black. So basically this gradient here is working like a mask to make the back of the planet where it is dark fully black. And so where it is that lighter color, that's where you're going to be able to see the atmosphere. So now we need to create an atmosphere material, and then where you can't see the atmosphere, we want that to be transparent so you can see through it and see the planet underneath. So I'm going to press Shift A, let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for an emission shader because an emission shader is going to emit light, and so we're going to use this for the atmosphere. I'm also going to press Shift A, and let's go to the search, and I'm going to search for the transparent because anywhere where you can't see the atmosphere, we want it to be transparent. Now the emission shader is going to be the atmosphere. Atmosphere. So if I control shift and select it to preview it, I want to change the color here and I'm going to make this a blue color because the Earth's atmosphere is blue, of course. But if you're making some other cool sci-fi planet, you could of course change the atmosphere color to any color that you want. I'm going to go with a bright blue color. And then on the strength here, I'm going to turn this up to like a 25 so it is much brighter. And I know it looks very blown out and very white, but it will look much better when we've set it all up. So I now want to mix the emission and the transparent together. So I'm going to select the emission, hold down the shift key and select the transparent. And then I can press control zero. And again, this is using the feature of the node wrangler and it's going to add a mix shader and mix them together. And then just make sure you control shift and select the mix shader to preview it. So if we drag the factor value, that is going to mix between only using the transparent and only using the emission. So if I turn it up to one, it's all transparent, so we can't see it at all. But if I turn the factor all the way to zero, it's fully using the emission. So we don't want to use a single factor value, we're going to use the darken here in the factor. So we're going to put the color into the factor. Now you can see we're pretty much completely using the emission, and so I actually just want to switch these. So I'm going to put the emission into the bottom one, and then the transparent is going to go into the top one. And I can just switch these so the transparent is on top. Now it's still using too much of the emission, and I want it to be more transparent. So we are going to make the atmosphere mask darker. So I'm going to select the color ramp, and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and we're going to stick it right down here and we're going to stick it after the layer weight and then with the color ramp selected you can hit the backspace and that is going to reset the color ramp now if I control shift and select the darken, you can see here's the mask for where the atmosphere is. And if it is darker, there will be less atmosphere, but if it is lighter, there will be more atmosphere. So on this color ramp here, I'm going to click on the white tab and click on the color, and I'm going to make this darker. And if I control shift and select the mix shader, you can see what it's doing. So I'm going to click on this white tab right here, and I'm going to make this much darker. And this way, there's not going to be quite as much of the atmosphere. I want to make sure that the layer weight facing is going 
between to the color ramp, the facing works a lot better than the Fresnel. So put the facing into the factor of the color ramp. And then I can control a shift and select the mix shader and that looks a lot better. Now I still want to play around with the color ramp. So I'm first going to click on the black tab and I'm going to drag this out a bit. And this way you can't see the atmosphere quite as well in the center there. And I think I will make this just a little bit of a darker color. If you turn the color down, then you can see the atmosphere less and less. So I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. And then if you want to adjust the sharpness of the fade there, you can do that back on the top color ramp. So you can drag the black tab and you can drag the white tab. I do want to have a small fade, so something like that. So that is it. That is the atmosphere material. And if I select the sunlight and press G to grab, you can see the atmosphere is moving along with the sunlight. Now if I zoom in here to the edge, you can see there is a gap there between the planet and the atmosphere, and there should be a small gap. But if you want to change this, you can press the tab key to go into edit mode and you can press the A key to select the entire atmosphere and then you can press S to scale and you could even either make it smaller or you could make it bigger depending on the size of the atmosphere and then you can press the tab key to go back to object mode. Now if you're using Blender Eevee you do need to change a few settings because on default the transparency doesn't work in Eevee. So let me show you the different settings that I would change to get this to work better in Eevee. So I'm going to go right over here to the render properties and I'm going to click on the render engine here and change this over to Eevee. So to make this look a lot better in Blender Eevee, I'm going to turn on the ambient occlusion and also the bloom that's going to add the glow there around the atmosphere. And I'm also going to turn on the screen space reflections. And then we also need to open up the screen space reflections and we need to click on the refraction. And we need to turn this on to get the transparency to work. Now we still can't see through the atmosphere. That's because we need to click right over here on the material properties and we need to open up the settings. And on the blend mode right here, we need to change this to alpha blend. And this way it's actually going to use the transparency in the material. Now in Blender Eevee, this is very laggy and that's just because of the procedural planet that I made. So I'm just going to press H to hide the atmosphere and then I can click on the procedural planet. And in Blender Eevee, if you're using very detailed procedural textures and they're going into the bump, it can make it very laggy. So if I was using this for Blender Eevee, what I would do is I would bake out the textures to texture maps and then that way the performance would be much better. But just for this video, I'm just going to unplug the bump nodes, but the performance will be much better better in Blender Eevee. And then I can press Alt H to unhide the atmosphere. Now the atmosphere doesn't actually look that good if there isn't any glow on the edge. So if you want to make some glow on the edge, you can go here to the render properties and you can open up the bloom settings. And then you can turn up this intensity. So I'm going to go with maybe just like a 1. That might actually be too bright. So maybe just like a 0.6. That is a bit better. And you can play around with the color here. So I might just make this like slightly blue. And that bloom really makes it look a lot better in Blender Eevee. So that is super cool. Now, just to finish off this video, I've switched the render engine back over to Cycles because I want to show you how to get a nice glare and bloom effect in Cycles. So what we have to do in Cycles is render out the image and then we need to add the glare node in Blender's compositor. All right, so here is the rendered image. So let's do some compositing. So I'm going to click right over here to go to the compositing tab and then click on the use nodes and also click on the backdrop right here. And then we turned on the node wrangler add-on at the beginning of this video so you can control shift and select different nodes and that is going to add the viewer node and so you can preview what the compositing looks like in the background. Now I also want to hold down the shift key and right click and drag over these wires and let go and this is going to add a reroute so we now just have one wire that we can add the compositing nodes into. Now to create the glare I'm going to press shift a let's go to the search and I'm going to search for the glare node and let's just stick this down here and then I want to click on the streaks and I am going to use fog glow. Now you're not actually going to be able to see very much glare and that is because there's nothing in the scene which is super bright so we need to turn the threshold down so it'll use less bright values. So I'm going to turn the threshold to like a 0.1 and then I'm also just going to leave the quality here at the medium and then the size I will turn that up to 9 so it is a bit brighter. And then it still isn't that bright so I'm just going to click on the glare node and I'm going to press shift D to duplicate it and just drop it here. 
And there we go, so we now have a really nice glowing atmosphere. So that is it, that is how you create a planet atmosphere in Blender. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial, and I hope you found it helpful. And if you'd like to watch some of my planet tutorials, then you can check out my procedural earth tutorial, and also my procedural lava planet, and my procedural ice planet. I'll have links to all those tutorials in the description. And if you'd like to help support me and this channel, you can also purchase the tutorial files with the links in the description, and I do appreciate your support. But I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.